Hey guys, we're back. This time we're taking a look at the Stug 3 Ossip G, which is the German tank in the Wave 1 expansions for the World of Tanks miniatures game. And uh, again, I love these packages for the fact that you can look at the model from every direction. I think it's cool the way they set them up. Sorry for the glare on there. On the back here we have a cool list of components which makes it really handy if you ever go to sell off a tank you can look up exactly what came with it and uh, we're gonna get in and take a look so first off here on our little insert on the inside of it there is information on how to claim your invite codes and here at the bottom which mine are ripped off is a little card with codes on there and the top code is available for new accounts only and it's the same for everyone so anybody out there who's not played the video game can check it out gives you a free premium tank a garage slot seven days of premium and 500 gold the one on the bottom is for existing accounts it gives you one day of premium a large repair kit and uh, combat rations and that one's unique for each up, um, expansion the top one though like I said anybody can feel free to claim so check those out Anytime you buy one of these tanks, you're going to get one of those codes, which is pretty awesome way to uh, thank the fans. So the first thing we have here is our vehicle card, and these are super high glossy, so pardon the reflections on there. But uh, you can see here is the name of the tank. It is a assault gun and has light flanks. We go over here. It is a tier 5 tank. It is a tank destroyer. It has 38 points. We have a firepower of 4, a survivability of 2, mobility of 2, initiative 5. We have 4 hit points here. We have a commander, driver, gunner, and a loader radio operator. On the flip side, we have a little bit of history about the tank, some background on it, which is cool. Up here in the corner, we have our assault gun rule, which is in the main rule book. And the light flank, which means the side of this, uh, when you're being attacked from the flank, you actually lose an additional die. Because uh, basically on a tank destroyer, most of the time your front armor is reinforced, but the side and rear isn't. So anytime somebody's flanking you and they attack, normally you remove a die from your defense. In this case, because of the light flank, you're going to remove two dice. And then we have here is our tank destroyer rule. And this is the first time we've actually got one of these. This tank gains a uh, plus one defense while in cover. So your survivability goes up by one as long as you're in cover, which helps, especially uh, with that lighter flank armor. Let me get on to our upgrade cards, and again with this one, we have one upgrade that has to be shown, and then a bunch of others. So our first upgrade, and this is the one that has to be shown because it's a change to the model, is to replace the Stug's main weapon with a 105, which is a really big gun. And um, the trade-off in this is that it gives you plus two attack, which is awesome, but it also fires high explosive round, which means only criticals basically do damage. You're going to discard all your normal hits before assessing damage. So keep that in mind with this one. Only your crits are going to do damage if you're doing this. But it's a six attack, uh, six die attack, which is nice. Not bad for a two-point upgrade. And this, of course, can only be used on German tanks. Our next upgrade is Designated Target. It's a gunner upgrade for 5 points. When shooting, the defending tank does not gain the in-cover bonus if it's already shot this phase or moved. Well, it has a movement token, which means you moved. But basically, if uh, they sit still and don't fire, you don't get this bonus. But if they move or fire, you're going to uh, negate their cover bonus. Very nice. Next, we have Eagle Eye, which is a commander upgrade. 5 points. When shooting, this tank may roll one less attack die, but then you can modify a normal hit into a crit, which is kind of cool. So you roll one less dice for that chance of any of your normal hit. Well, one of your normal hits can be converted to a critical. Could be useful. It's a little expensive, I think, for 5 points, but I haven't played it enough to really see, but that's just my thought. Next, we have fill the tanks with CO2, which is an equipment upgrade for 1 point. It's discarded when used, and it cancels the Lucky Hit Critical card, which causes a, a fuel tank fire, I believe, which is the point there. But kind of nice for a one-point upgrade. 
It's situational because it relies on you drawing that lucky hit uh, card, and it only works once. So, uh, if you got the extra point to spare, why not? But otherwise, it's it's one of those that's situational. And finally, we have Bernard Noki. I think I said that right. He's a unique crewman. He's a loader, and must be on a German tank for two points. He has safe stowage, which is plus one initiative during the shooting phase. You can also discard him to cancel an ammo damage critical card. And he also gives you the repair ability, which allows you to repair a or attempt to repair a additional crit each turn. Kind of useful, definitely worth it for the points, I think. And then we have our Stug model. And uh, the only thing I don't much care for on this model is that they put the side skirt armor on there. And you'll have to forgive me, I can't remember the exact name for it. Someone will post it below, but I know it has a name. But um, they gave the tank, by default, the, the light flank armor. And then they gave you the extra armor on the sides. But it didn't come with the card for the extra side armor. So, it's kind of weird. But... Um, other than that, it's all right. You can see this is like a mold notch there. They didn't sand very well before priming. But other than that, it looks pretty good to me. I always had issues putting some of these together, so I won't complain. But yeah, that that bothers me. You can see the mold line there, too, on the barrel. So that, if you're a painter, you're probably going to want to clean that up before you paint anyway. You can see it's even off up here because of the mold line. But... Uh, Still my favorite tank. So as for the assault gun rule, if you have your tank like this, your fire arc is basically going to be everything in front of your vehicle. So everything here up is in your fire arc. And this is kind of confusing for people at first because they don't explain it very well in the uh, rule book. But the way it works is that, yeah, anything here is in your fire arc. Anything here, uh, even way over here, is still in your fire arc. The catch to it is, as long as it's in front of that line, if any part of a vehicle is behind that line, this is no longer in your fire arc. If any part's behind that line, you have to be also within the front, directly in front of your tank. So while that's not an arc, this would be. And the same on the other side, you know, anything over here is not out of arc. This is out of arc. This is in arc. You know, and but it, it's just any if any piece is across this this line here going this way, you have to also be in that arc. Otherwise, you're not. It's kind of confusing at first. Like I said, they don't explain it very well in the rules. But I thought I'd point it out if you're not familiar with the way the assault guns work. I really can't say much about the Stug without being biased because it is probably my favorite tank. And uh, even in the World of Tanks game, it's a tier 5, but I still use it all the time because it's my favorite one to play. It's a lot of fun. The low profile makes it hard to hit, and the gun's pretty damaging. Most of that um, transfers well into this game. Like I said, my only complaint is that it came with the side skirt armor on here, but it didn't come with a card for them, which I think was in the basic set, so you still have it. It's just one of those little annoying things. Overall, though, like I said, it's my favorite tank, so I'm a little biased on it. I think it works just as good in the tabletop game as it does in the video game. I wish the gun was a little more damaging. The upgrade to the 105 is nice, but you'll lose that because of the high explosive ammo. It only hits on a crit thing. You, you lose the, the effectiveness of it. While you're rolling more dice, it doesn't hit at least to me, as hard. I wish they had given you some kind of option to uh, upgrade the gun without the high explosive ammo, even at a higher points cost or something. That would make it a lot better. But for me, it's still a nice tank. I think um, the Germans are kind of getting a little screwed in the new game so far. As the, In the original game, you started with a Panther, which was just a beast of a tank for what it was. And in the starter set for this, you get a Panzer IV, which is not quite as durable. And then you get this Thug here, which they've kind of also made not quite as durable. Still, it's a good tank. It's a good addition. I own like five of them, and I plan on using a nice little platoon of them.
whenever I play, just because I enjoy them, just got to watch out for those uh, flanking shots. They're very detrimental. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for our look at the Stug 3 for World of Tanks miniatures game. As always, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.